is the book of Proverbs, and part of it is what we call Ecclesiastes, as well as Songs of Solomon. In fact, one verse there, verse 31, particularly spoke about the Songs of Solomon. And I remember we have studied the Song of Solomon in this place. So God has blessed us in this place to help us to know God, to make sure that we know God, and that we are close to God. But I want to say to you tonight, there are undermining factors. Why men do not be, 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 behave and do not become the capacity that God had given them. There are reasons, there are, uh, there are things that happen that we don't take notice of, except by revelation, that God can begin to open your eyes and then you begin to see Oh, this is the problem with me and this is the problem with my generation and this is the problem with my society and this is the problem with the people I'm preaching to and this is the problem that I'm not making an impact or an inroad or it seems the word of God is not working. There are those things that we have to know by revelation. Not only that, I told us if we are going to unlock the realm of the spirit, then we need to understand that you not you need to know how to pray. Because if you don't know how to pray, you will not be able to unlock the realms of the Spirit. Because according to Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 3, he said he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And 2 Peter chapter 2 or chapter 1 also says, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. But then, these blessings are not here on earth. They are spiritual. But then, how do you bring them down? You bring them down by prayer. Now, if they were down here, Satan would have corrupted it. If they were down here, Satan would have hacked it. If they were down here, then they would not be available to us anymore. And so if a person is going to discover capacity, he has to understand how to download these things spiritually. But many of us run away from spiritual things. We want to do things in the natural way we understand. That is, our brain can calculate. We can make up our mind to do or not to do. We don't want to be unusual. We don't want to be queer. We don't want to be special. We don't want to be anything that looks uh, totally different from the other members of society. And so as a result, we have a problem in attaining capacity in God. Secondly, I told us that when we pray, the gifts of God will show up. Just like we see in the case of Solomon. In chapter 3 of 1 Kings, we are told that Solomon prayed. He went to Gibeon because at that time there was no place. There was no holy place. And so people were praying everywhere. In fact, the Bible says that they, because the tabernacle or the temple had not been, uh, been built, then the ark I think was in Gibeon. And so he went to Gibeon to pray. And then he slept. And then, then the gift of God was given to him that night. And then God said, because you have not asked for something personal, you have not asked for something that is for you, but you have asked for the multitude of my people. Then I'm going to give you a wise heart. I'm going to give it like the sand of the seashore. And that was marvelous. Now, I, I told you and I challenged you last Sunday. I wonder how many of us have sought wisdom to that level. Whereby the wisdom we have is able to move a lot of things. And so God wants us to have capacity unlocked. But then there are these things I'm mentioning that are important. Not only that, the disciplines that are necessary. However, many of these things that I call discipline, many of us do them, but they are, <laughs> they are undermined by other things. Now let me explain. Because as you are listening, time is running. And I, I, I don't want to waste your time this night. 
Because I want to be as precise in language as I can. If you read the book of Revelation, which a lot of writers, a lot of preachers, a lot of people have, you know, interpreted, have misinterpreted, have said this and have said that. Well, granted, they're trying. But hear me, brothers and sisters. When you understand that John the Apostle was the, one of the last that lived on the surface of the earth, you will get to understand that he had revelation. And at that time, the believers were under pressure. The believers were persecuted. The believers were dying. The believers were under total pressure under the Roman government. Which, Paul, which John the Apostle called in the book of Revelation the beast. The Roman government was the beast. They were then the government that was ruling. They were the beast of the earth at that time. Now, Revelation is written is for, the, for that time and it's also for our time. Now, lest you think that that beast and that antichrist is dead, it's good to warn you that that beast is not dead. The remnants of the Roman regime is what you have in the Western world. The remnants of the rulership of the Western civilization is what you have in the Western world. And so that beast is not dead. So what am I talking about? Let me be simple. What I'm saying is this. You come to church, the preacher preaches to you to believe the gospel. <laughs> All right? And you believe the gospel. And the word of God is given to you and you rejoice because of the word of God. You come to worship. You come to all the things and the services. And that is nice. You are asked to do quiet time. You do quiet time. You are asked to attend a small group. You attend a small group. Maybe hope or maybe a spirit and the scriptures. Uh, maybe fellowship. Maybe Bible study. Maybe you are asked to trust God financially and give to missions and give tithes and give offerings and you obey. These things are beautiful and powerful. Now we're asked to do our best, right? So that we'll be like Christ in our place of work, in our homes, at school, in the marketplace, and ever, everywhere we are. We are told to be like Christ and we are doing our best to do the same. Now will you spiritual gifts, even inside the church and outside the church. All right? We are asked to lead a small group. We are asked to be an usher. We are asked to be maybe in the media group. Maybe we are asked to be a board member. Maybe you are asked to be one thing or the other. And then go and do evangelism. And all, all that that I'm saying now are not strange to you. We attend conferences. We read books. We listen to video, we listen to the YouTube, we listen to tapes and so on and so forth. These things are good. But hear me, brothers and sisters, with all this, we still find many who are drawing away from Jesus, who are drawing away from Christ because of the presence of this beast, which is often neglected because not too long we find out that we compromise our stand with Jesus. Some have one leg inside and one leg outside. Some are totally in the world and they don't even want to go to church anymore. They prefer sitting in their home and listening to video. They prefer sitting in their home and say, well, we want to go to a nearby church. They prefer sitting in their homes and doing nothing. And that's the way things have turned. Hear me, please, before you lose trail. Please, are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? I want you to be with me because this is a serious matter and revelation from God that I'm sharing with you. I'm not telling a story per se. I'm bringing to you the mind of God. I'm telling you things are going on which will neglect our peril. Now, hear me very carefully. A time comes as we do all these things that I've listed and that I've made announcement and talked about just now, that a deep-rooted pattern of behavior that moves you away from Christ. 
which were subsequent to Christ. But there are those deep-rooted behavior patterns that is in your life that gradually move you out from Jesus. You even do not know about it. But somehow, somehow, you find yourself with this deep-rooted pattern of behavior drawing you away, leading you away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of our world, I'm telling you now, are under the culture and the world around us and the system around us is this system of Babylon. Is this system of the beast. However, we all underestimate their power because of the way it sucks us in. Because of the way it is beautified. Because of the way of the language. Because we also un underrate and underestimate the power of the gospel as well. And so because of these things, we are no more able to stand in the face of the Babylonian systems. What, do I, why am, why am I, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the culture. I'm talking about the culture. I'm talking about the culture. What do I mean by the culture? What people do generally in our society. All right? What people do generally in our society, the way they dress, the way they sleep, the way they spend money, the way they go to parties, the way they make their sacrifices, the places they go in the night, the groups they belong to, the cults they belong to, the way and manner in which they steal examinations in order to be first person. The way that a lecturer will have to sleep with a woman before the woman will graduate. The way that a person will cheat in his place of work in order to make it. The way somebody will use one bag of cement for so many pans of, of sand to make the building. And after he finishes the building, the building collapses. That's what I'm talking to you about our culture. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the economy. The economy in the whole world. Look at the way it is. The government will come today and say this. The society will be experiencing something else. The government will say uh, a, a petrol is 500 naira. When you get to the petrol station, it's 620. When the government will say the, the petrol is 500 naira. You get to another station, they say it's 580. And you get to government, government will say this one. The newspaper will say one. Another TV will say another one. And the economy is jumbled. And you don't even know what is going on. What am I talking about? I'm talking about that beast that tells lies. And we all believe the lies of the, of the beast. Oh, we, we cite the government. The government is doing well. And then the people too are doing well. So we're either, either on the side of the people or we're on the side of the government. We are under the side of our political party and our friends and maybe some of the people we know who are high up. We are either on their side or we are on the side of the people. But brother, be on the side of God. And I'm praying that God will convince you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, the economy, the way the economy runs, that's what I'm talking about. That's the thing that draws us away from Jesus. Think about the education. Look at the educational system. Look at the military. The terror, the terror cells, how the military is loosed all over the world today. I mean, right across our street here, for three hours, people were shooting at each other. And they say, well, they want to take over the government. I was still talking to somebody in the Middle East this afternoon. And he said, ah, are you in that place where uh, there, something just took place recently? I mean, for as far back, as far as the Middle East, they have had what happened in our street. So what I'm talking about, I'm talking about that system that is the system of the world. I'm talking about that system erected by Satan to lure away the believers. And the believers, not knowing what to do, not having what to do, and being afraid of what to do, and to take a stand, they, they have a palaver. And this was the situation at the time of John. The people will lose their privileges. The people will lose their jobs. The people will lose their education. The people will lose their uh, hard-earned uh, money. 
The people will lose anything in society because you refuse to conform to the society and you refuse to conform to the things that are being done. And as a result, you are put upside. And so you are left to die. Or if you don't like to eat, you don't like to do whatever that's left to you. And so gradually some submitted to the Roman, to the Roman uh, government. And so the world sucked them in. You know, they will promise them security. They will promise them it as an eternal city. They will promise them possibilities of dazzling wealth. That was the way they did it in those days. And so John was writing to the believers at that time. And then he wrote to the seven churches. And he told one church, he said, yes, efficient church, thank God. You are doing, you are fervent. Thank God. You are this, you are that, but you have lost your first love. He wrote to another church that you say you know, you say you are okay, you say you don't need anything, you say you are perfect, but you are most miserable. You are really miserable, but you don't know it. You know, that was there's something wrong with that church. Another church, he, he, he wrote to them, he said, You have followed the, the story and you followed the teaching of Nicholas, and therefore they were called Nicolaitans. You have followed the, the story and the teaching of Nicholas, and now you are lost. So he gave those seven, uh, uh, seven views, seven reviews that covered the entire church at that time. Before he now began to speak about how the beast was walking and how he was doing things. Sorry, are you still following me now? Sorry, are you still following me? So our faith will be tested. And this is what believers don't like. The world will demand for you to obey. The world will demand for you to obey. And so you either obey or you lose your job or your privilege or your reputation or your friends and so on and so forth. So this global culture that we are facing today was no less in those days as well. So the global culture is screaming at us from computers. It's screaming at us from billboards. It's screaming at us from supermarkets. It's screaming at us from TV screens. It's screaming at us on DVDs. It's screaming at us from music. It's screaming at us from our schools. It's screaming at us from newspapers and iPods, and Androids, and iPhones, and all manner of communication gadget you can, you can ever think. And the church does not have the money to match them. And the ones who even, I'm so sorry, who do billboards, you can't even vouch for them too. Not because I'm accusing them of anything, but you, you find out that they are not very far from the people they are trying to draw into the churches. But thank God the name of Jesus is still mentioned. And I'm believing God here tonight. The Lord will so touch your life and change you around forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen about that. Now, having said all this, that leaves me to say that in the midst of all this, the temptation comes to then test you and test me and ask bogus questions. Now, because I have the bogus questions myself, <laughs> I, I did something I don't usually do. <laughs> I, I went to Google. I said, does miracles exist? <laughs> As if I don't know the Bible, I just put myself there because it's the last speaker for everybody. Come and see the answers that were presented. That God doesn't exist. Oh, God exists, but he doesn't answer prayer like he used to do. Oh, he answers prayer, but not the way. Uh, God is not as strong as he was in the day of Moses. All manner of things like that. But what I'm saying is this. Understand that God is watching us to take hold of his own wisdom, to take hold of his own word, to take hold of what belongs to us, that God will do something in our life that is different from what he's doing in the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is God able to heal? The answer is yes. Look at Jeremiah with me, chapter 1, verse 12. I'll be running now. But just go with me to scripture 
uh, step by step. I'm going to do this uh, almost exhaustively, so please follow me. I finished the introduction, and I want to now uh, pay attention to the things that the, the world is disputing. In, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast, seen, thou hast well seen, I will hasten my word to perform it. Can we read that together aloud? Maybe if you read with some quickening in your spirit, I'll be very, very happy. Can we read again very, very loud? In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 14. Jeremiah 17, 14. Can we read aloud, please, together? Can we read Jeremiah 17, 14? Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Can we read again? Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Can you say amen to that? Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. Those verses don't need commentary. Jeremiah chapter 30, a reading in verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. The word of God remains the same forever and ever. Jeremiah chapter 30, 3, 0, verse 17. Can we read that together too? For I will restore health unto you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you read again? For I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Hallelujah. Can you hear the word of God? It said they will heal your wounds. It said they will heal your internal wounds. It said they will heal your external wounds. It said they will heal your family wounds. It said they will heal your children's wounds. It said they will heal your relationship wounds. It said they will heal that which has bogged you down for life in the mighty name of Jesus. My brother, some people's wounds are in their brains. They can't comprehend the Bible. They can't speak English. They can't speak Yoruba. It's a wound. Hello. Are you together with me? So this goes very, very deep. When God says, I will heal you of your wounds, it means that when, when we were created, we were created in his likeness. We were not created to do mama, 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 mama. We were not created to do me, 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 me. We were not created like that. We were created like our father. And I'm praying that God will restore our health in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You have some people to quote the Bible, they can't quote the Bible. You have some people to read the Bible, they can't read the Bible. You have some people to pray, they have no utterance to pray. You have some people to do certain things, you just see that they're paralyzed. They're, they're lame. They're, they, 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 they are crippled. Almost crippled. What's wrong? But God said, I will heal you of your wounds. Can we read again? I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord God, because they have called thee what? An outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Ha, will the people will seek after your God. I didn't hear your amen about that. Let's look at Matthew chapter 21. I'm just progressing with Revelation, Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. Can we all read aloud together? Can we read aloud? Can we read aloud Matthew 21, 21?
Can we read again, please? I'm very sorry. Please, can we read again? I want you to be certain about what you are reading. Matthew chapter, Ma Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 and 22. Yes, we have forgotten. I don't want you to forget. Can you read verse 21 once more? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not. Now, here it is. If you have faith and do what? I didn't hear you very well. Now, the problem here, and doubt not, is where a person begins to vacillate. You have a word in your mouth, even as a natural person, and then you vacillate on that word. In other words, your words are not sound. Your words are shaky. You are not, you are not even sure what you want to say. So that when your word hits anything, that thing is doubting as well. The demons are also in doubt of what you have just said. Praise God. I said, praise God. Verse 21, once more. Can we read together? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be what? It shall be done. Verse 22. And all things... Can we all say that together? I am not hearing you from here. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall what? Receive. Can I hear an amen to that? Which means that God is able to heal. Which means that God is able to provide. Which means that God is able to turn your case around. Which means that God is able to do things according to his purpose. In Mark chapter 9, reading verse 23. Are we together? Are we together? Oh, we are not together. You are wondering. Oh, you are writing. You are writing. Okay, uh, that's good. But please, let's pay attention. Can we read verse 23? And he said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are what? Possible to him that does what? Believe it. And that's the problem. And that's where our trouble comes. When we try something and then we fail, then we don't make any attempt to do it again because we believe we have asked. And we believe it was possible, but it was impossible. And then we begin to doubt and then we cast the thing away completely and make the word of God and God himself a liar. But the word of God says in here in verse 23, it says, if thou canst believe, all things are what? Possible to him that does, that believe it. How is it a man will construct a bridge across the lagoon, which we call the third mainland bridge? How is it a man will take a rocket and go to the moon? How is it that a man will go from here to Mars? To go and test what is there. How is it a man will make a telescope that can capture the pictures from the moon 93 million miles away? And so you see the expanse of man's knowledge. You see the greatness of the grace that God had given to human beings. And so God was saying to us, all things are possible to him that does what? That believe it. So I want to encourage you tonight, whatever your trouble, the Lord will take you out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, is the last verse I'm going to read in this, uh, in this uh, uh, pursuit. In Acts chapter 10 verse 20, uh, 38, I know you know it, but I want us to read it. Acts chapter 10 verse 38, are we together? Sorry, are we together? Alright, Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God, are we together? Can we read aloud? How God, listen, how who? I say how who? Who, 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 who anointed him? Who anointed Jesus? Because he was man. He was a man on earth. He was eating like you eat. He was sleeping like you sleep. 
he was tired on the pillow. Like you are tired and you sleep. So he was a man. But then the Bible says, what did they say about him? How God did was anointed him. Jesus of Nazareth with what? You are not quick. Can you be a little quicker? With the Holy Ghost and what? And power. What did he then do with it? I said, what did they do with it? Let me spend two minutes here and not run away. What did he do with it? Did he stay at home with it? Did he stay in the kitchen with it? What did he do with it? He went about. You only come to church. You don't go about. The only place you know for your anointing is here. Praise God. I said, praise God. So it's not that God has changed. Hello? Are you with me? <laughs> when I was 25, when I was 25, I was going around about this state preaching. Every nook and cranny that we could get to in Bauchi State. Because we were government children. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? I mean, nobody could hold us down. We were going about preaching. It is then we see the hand of God, not when you sit down. What do you need the anointing for? If you just sit down and do nothing, you don't pray for anybody, you don't do Bible class, you don't do house church, you don't do nothing. You just have anointing, and the anointing is there. And then, what for? It's for nothing. So you see here, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With the Holy Ghost and with what? And with power. Hello. I said hello. And so when I had the opportunity, and like I told you before, I tried to be a lecturer at the College of Mines, St. John's, because that was the thing I was interested in. In the meanwhile, I applied to one university in England. And they admitted me. But then I was between two opinions. But thank God, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And from the moment I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I buried all those plans. And said, I'm going to preach. I was born to preach. And so I began to learn that. I began to pray that. And so every Friday, we did night vigil, our group. Every day, we did quiet time. Every day we preached. Every day we drew Bible study outline. Every time we traveled. That was what led me to go to Kano at that time. Just to preach. But in Brighton around, I, I, I saw that there was a challenge bookshop. And I went inside. And I found the Dex Bible. And those days, the Dex Bible was very special. To all those of us who are younger in the Lord. It was just the big, big guys in the Lord that bought those things. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? How God anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about. So I bought that Dick's Bible and began to read it cover to cover. And somebody came to deceive us that if you have to, if you are born again, you have to be baptized again and again. Uh, not in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so they took us to Dadinkowa Dam. In front of Gombe. And they went and baptized us. And then we came back. Myself, Reverend Mother Nisi, uh, my, my, my friend, Bra Mike, and then one brother, Igbo brother, we sat down together, began to search the Bible. We called one other brother, an apostolic faith brother, and we sat down, began to search the Bible. Said, This is a lie. To baptize in the name of Jesus means to do it in his authority. But he himself said, You baptize in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From that time, I began to read Bible cover to cover. Nobody is ever going to deceive me again. Are you following my story? Sorry, are you following my story? And we were running around like that. I came to Ilori and we started running again. I remember on Sunday, we would go to the small English Baptist church. On Monday, I will go to Yoruba Bible, uh, Bible uh, sorry, I will go to English Bible study. On Tuesday, I'll go for Yoruba Bible study. On Wednesday, I'll go and lead Bible study myself at Christian Life Center. On Thursday, we go to Sobi Barracks for Crusade. And for on Friday, 
And we were doing crusade every Thursday and every Friday. How will you not see miracles? Something you don't do regularly, you can't see it happen suddenly. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sorry, do you understand what I'm saying? That's the way it works. Something you don't do regularly, you can't have it suddenly happen until you reignite the grace of God and begin to do it again. So we can't have anointing and keep it in the church. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have to stop there. If not, we'll spend the whole night trying to explain that. But I'm sure you got my illustration. Are you together with me? And that is why it is very important, very early in your life, in the middle of your life, at the end of your life, to learn wisdom that it is one of the master keys to all the treasure of life. That's what the Bible says. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. That's what the Bible says very clearly. Now, so if you want to serve God, if you want to, even, you are, even if when you are not serving God, if you want to be a father, if you want to be a mother, if you want to be, hey, I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I just remembered now that, you know, when we don't have wisdom, we don't think thoroughly. We don't see things totally. The way you treat your children or train your children eventually results to the limit you are able to think. Yeah, that's what happens. If at any point you stop praying for those children, if at any point you start, stop seeking the wisdom of God to manage your life. So it is the wisdom of God that will help you with the scriptures I have just read now. Either on your own or I'm praying this night. Whatever case it is, it has to be God's inspiration to put you in line so that problems can be solved. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I've already told you, I want to repeat it, that mental problems are solved by the word of God. Because, brothers, let me say something to you. If you mentally do not arrange certain things well by themselves, not, world, not just worldly wisdom, but just the ordinary man arranging things well in your own house, now things will not go well. In other words, can you change basu 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 basu? Can you lower lower corner basu 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 basu? No plan. Not following the Holy Spirit. But God forbid from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen. Wisdom brings and guarantees promotion. It is wisdom that guarantees promotion. It is wisdom that you fear God. In other words, when you have the word of God, the leadership of the word of God, a pastor over your life, the fear of God commands you that you follow wisdom. And that's important. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. That's what the Bible says. And so I want to just end up there without dragging the matter. But I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, that God needs to help us individually, collectively, family level, every one of us, to be able to do our best so that what God has placed in your life and your destiny will not be aborted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear your amen about it. Sorry, I didn't hear your amen. We're going to stand up. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray some prayers. But please have your Bible with you. Because I'm going to show you what I, the prayers I want to raise from the Bible as God put it in my heart. Hallelujah. If while we're praying, the Lord began to touch your life. If while we're praying, the Lord began to visit you. I want you to put your Bible down and really begin to pray for yourself. You don't need to follow us in every verse. But when God comes to you and begins to touch your life, you can put your Bible down and interact with the Holy Spirit that will come upon you tonight. Because the fire of God will cleanse you of every sickness and every disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 5. At the end of that chapter, 
That's where I want to read. Hebrews chapter 5 at the end. But strong meat belong to them that are full age. Even to those by reason of, of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Chapter 6 verse 1. Can we all read aloud verse 6, to, verse, uh, six verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the what? Number 1. The doctrine of Christ. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Verse number two. Of the doctrine of what? Baptisms. Of the laying on of hands. And of the resurrection of the dead. And eternal just judgment. Can you say amen to that? Here the Bible regards that even laying on of hands. Either for wisdom or laying on of hands for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or laying on of hand for, for healing. The, the elementary things which all of us need to have learned so that we can go further to other ways of getting the work of God done. And one of that is the word of the living God. And I'm praying tonight as we read the Bible together and we pray, the Lord will touch your life in the name of Jesus Christ. In jo you can write them down or listen to this tape later. Uh, please, maybe I beg you to listen to it because don't do like before. Uh, if somebody has prayed and brings you the word of God, please take it seriously. If not, I'm sorry, you will be in the desert for the next one year. So don't be like that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please, in the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 26. The book of Job, chapter 28, verse 26. The book of Job, chapter 28, verse 26. Can we all read together? It's on the board. But please, the people on this side can't see. I'm very sorry. Maybe by next Sunday we'll have repaired uh, this uh, projector. I'm very sorry for that. Can we all read together? When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of what? Of thunder. <laughs> Can we read again, please? When he made a way. Huh? Read now, read now, read on your own. Let's read again. When he made a decree for the rain, I for a way for the lightning of what? Of thunder. Can you say, Father? Can you say loud, Father? In the name of Jesus, make a way for rain in my life. Make a way for a lightning thunder in my life. I'm not hearing you say it very loud. Say, Father, make rain for my life. Make a decree for rain in my life. And a lightning thunder in my life to destroy sickness, to destroy disease, to destroy evil patterns. Can you raise your voice and pray that prayer? Oh, you are just shaking something. You are not really praying. Maybe you are tired. From the, from the day. But this is the time to pray. Let God make a way for the rain in your life. Let there be lightning of thunder to heal and set you free right now. Redando Bosuta Kapala. Ranonzo Shipa Talibra Ketanaska. Raboso Shonda Lavara. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Let the rain wash off. Let the rain wash you clean. Let your rain wash you clean the mud. Let the rain wash you clean. Of all the death, let the rain wash you clean. And let there be a lightning thunder in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Job chapter 37. Job chapter 37 verse 3 and 4. Job chapter 37, verse 3 and 4. Can we, can we read verse 3? It looks my own loudspeaker is better than your own. Can we, can we do it again? He directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Verse number 4. After it... A voice roared, and he thundered with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay 
them where his voice is heard. Can you, do you understand that? Sorry, do you understand that? When the voice of God comes to you, no sickness can stay in your body. No disease can stay in your body. Nothing of the devil can stay in your body. Hear what they said. They said, after it's a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice and his excellency, and he will not stay them with it when his voice is heard. In other words, those things cannot stay when the voice of God is heard. Can I hear your amen? Can you say with me, Father? Can you say with me, Father? Can you say with all your heart, Father? Send your voice. Say, send your voice into my life. Let the sound, let the sound send waves of fire against sickness, against all disease in my life, in my life, in my life. In my life, stop responding naturally. Can you say, in my life? Can you pray that prayer for yourself? Can you pray that prayer for yourself? Let God quicken your motor body. Let God quicken your motor body. Let the deadness be gone. Let the deadness be gone. Let the deadness be gone. Let the panteri be gone. Let the things be washed away. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. The Lord is here. He will answer your prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. In Psalm 18, verse 13. Psalm 18, verse 13. Psalm 18, verse 13. Can we all read aloud together? Some of you try to find it in your Bible. I don't know exactly what's happening, but it doesn't really matter. Can you read Psalm 18, verse 13? Yeah, verse 14. He sent his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings, and discomfited them. So you see how God fights. Hello? I said hello. Do you see how God fights? God fights with lightning. God shoots lightning like arrows against things that want to destroy your life. Oh, that your amen is so tempered. Do you really believe your own amen? I said, do you really believe your own amen? Let your voice thunder like the voice of God. Are you with me? Let your voice do what? Thunder like the voice of God. This is one of my problems with some people. They can't communicate. They don't communicate. So you learn to communicate with your voice. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Sorry, are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? I mean, in some of these Oyubo countries... You see, there are loudspeakers are whispering and whispering and whispering. I'm sorry. That's the, way, that's the reason they are where they are today. I'm not talking about their technology. It's part of our problem. It's part of our problem. The trust in those things. No longer trusting the living God. Ah, saying God will bless your medicine and the hand of the medical doctor. By the time you pray that kind of prayer, you have no more faith in the living God that they can shoot arrows from heaven and you can be healed instantaneously. Hello? I said hello. I'm sure I'm offending some people right now. But that's the way we think. That's the way we reason. Because we have been, we've been trained the Western model, which is exactly what happened in the time of Jesus. Even after he was gone, the same thing happened. And so I'm going to plead with you again and say, Father God. Can you say with me, Father God, in the name of Jesus, anything walking up and down in my body, any DNA that is out of place, any jam that is walking up and down in my body, in my body, that is not allowing me to have good health right now 
Shoot your arrows at them now. Pray at that prayer. I want you to pray that prayer right now. That's the way to direct the prayer today. You are supposed to pray with me so that you can pray later for others. I'm not supposed to pray alone. I'm supposed to pray for you. Let teach you to pray and you can pray for others as well. Shoot that arrow, shoot that arrow, shoot that arrow at every sickness, every disease from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Let them, be dis let them be dispersed. Let his arrows be against sickness. Let the arrows of light, arrows of radiation, arrows of fire. Let them scatter the works of darkness in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Take your Bible again and go to Psalm 77 with me. Psalm 77 verse 18. I pray somebody will learn here tonight in the name of Jesus. Psalm 77 verse 18. Psalm 77 verse 18. Psalm 77 verse 18. Have you found the place? All right, can we read it aloud also? The voice that the voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightness lighted the world. The earth trembled and shook. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you say father? Let your voice shake out every root of sickness. Family sickness. Family genetic sickness. Let there be no DNA in my body that is obeying the past. In the name of Jesus, let every part of my body, housing germs and disease, shake now. Pray that prayer. from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. God is walking in your body. God is touching someone. That's what the Lord is telling me right here. So God is touching someone. God is touching someone. God is touching someone. God is touching somebody's body. God is touching somebody's heart. God is healing some wounds. God is healing some wounds. God is healing some wounds. It's taking away some sorrow. It's taking away some sickness. It's taking away some palavas. It's taking away some, just some things that ought not to be there. It's taking away things that have occupied space. Now, 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 now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. In Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. Understand what I'm doing. I'm supposed to pray with you. And you are also supposed to pray with somebody after. I believe God will grant you wisdom in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear your amen about that. Uh, is it because you are not going to do it? Answer me yes or no. We will do it in the name of Jesus. As you do it, we will all see results. First of all, in your life. And then in the life of others. In the name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. And he said, as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And the like appearance of lamps. And they went up and down among the living creatures. And the fire was bright. And out of the fire went forth what? Lightness. In other words, it is the angels that carry this lightning. In other words, it is the, the living spirits of God. That when they begin to move in your life, they leave no chance 
but they move up and down your body. They move up and down this world. They move up and down your family. They move up and down to see that something is accomplished and something shall be accomplished in your life tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you say with me, let the living creatures Oh, your voice is gone now. Maybe you are just a letter writer. Please leave, let your Bible alone. Leave your Bible alone. You will remember in the name of Jesus. I said you will remember in the name of Jesus. Can you say with me, Father? Let the living creatures of fire say it louder. Let the living creatures of fire run up and down my body with fire and lightning and heal in the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer once more? I want you to pray, let the living creatures of fire run up and down my body and let them lighten up my spirit, lighten up my body. Take away weakness, take away disease in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, listen to this instruction. Some of you that the Lord is touching you as you have been praying. Some of you desire that, Lord, you have to finish what you began in my life this night. This is the last verse I am going to read. There are five more, but I believe it's time. To ask those who want to come to the altar, to come to the altar. Not now, not now. We will finish this verse and then you can come to the altar. When we finish praying on this verse, then if you like, you can come to the altar. Because I want to pray with those people who come to the altar. And when you come to the altar, don't kneel down. You stand on your feet because God will make you strong. I said God will make you strong. Do you believe it that God will make you strong? I said, do you believe it that God will make you strong? Amen. Now in Zacharias chapter 10 verse 1. 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 Have you found the place? All right, shall we all read aloud together? As ye of the Lord what? Rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain, and to everyone grass in the field. Verse number two. Verse number two. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. And they comfort in vain. Therefore, they, want, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Verse number three. My anger was kindled against the shepherds. And I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts had visited this flock, the house of Judah, and had made them as a goodly horse in the battle. Let's go back to verse 1 and read verse 1 again. I want you to memorize this one. It said, ask ye the Lord what? Rain. In the time of the latter rain. So the Lord will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. How many of you know that this is the time of the latter rain? How many of you know that this is the time of the latter rain? Can I see hands? Oh, and this is a Pentecostal church. I'm so sorry about this. Praise God. I said praise God. Didn't you hear Joel says in the latter days, God will pour out of his spirit on all flesh. Didn't you read that? So you can't connect it with this. Amen. I believe God will take away this weakness. The inability to have revelation. The inability to see. 
the inability to apply the word of God to ourselves. Amen. Shall we read the verse again? Shall we read again, please, with, with, with your kindness? Ask ye the Lord what? Rain. When? Right now. Because this is the time of the latter rain. So, listen. When is it easy to ask for rain? Is it in dry season or wet season? Yeah. So, now it's time to ask for rain. That's why sometimes we gather together to pray. And truly, I don't know which verses we used to pray. But here, we have one that we can pray for the whole year until we get results. What did he say here? I said, what did he say here? Can you ask for rain for yourself tonight? I said, can you say with me, Father? I'm asking for new rain. <laughs> Can you say I'm asking for new rain? Over my life, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes to overcome what the idols have said, to overcome what their prophets have said, to overcome what their dreamers have said. In the mighty name of Jesus, can you open your mouth and pray and say, Father, give me the latter rain. Give me the latter rain. Give me the latter rain. I don't want up and down anymore. I don't want to be down today and up tomorrow. Up today, down tomorrow. Let me be consistent with fire. Let me be consistent with fire. In the name of Jesus. Can you say with me, Father? Can you say with me, Father? I want to be consistent with fire. Day and night. In the name of Jesus, can you pray that prayer? And as you are praying that prayer, you can come forward. I want to pray with you. Those of you, the Lord is touching you. The Lord is doing something in your life. I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you before you go home. Time is running out. I don't want to stay here till 7 p.m. I want you to come for him forward if you, did, you know that God is walking in your body, is walking in your stomach, is walking in your back, is walking in your leg, is walking in your stomach, is walking in your head, is walking everywhere and is touching you. I want you to come forward right here so that God will perfect that which he had begun. If God is not touching you, don't come out because I want to be particular on those that God is touching so that we can pray and you will have testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. I want you to raise your hand to heaven and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, what you have begun, perfect right now. I have come out boldly to demonstrate my faith. I have come out boldly to demonstrate that I believe you. That you will send your thunder. You will send your wave of fire. You will send your wave of light into my heart, into my spirit, into my soul. Those things that draw me away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Those things that consume my time. Those things that take away my, lo my love for the word of God. Those things that take away my joy for the word of God. Those enemies that take away my children from the word of God. Right now, smite them now. 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 Smite them now. 
smite them from the crown of their head to their soul of their in the name of Jesus this is your hour this is your time now 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 nothing remains standing nothing remains standing all those powers let them enter the ground and never come out again in your house let them never come again for temptation regain your time regain your memory regain your your heart regain your mouth regain your brain regain what you have lost regain them by the blood of jesus he has died for those things time today to be healed time today to be healed in the name of jesus thank you father blessed be your name in jesus mighty name we pray one of you have been struggling to pass a particular exam but you have not been able to pass tonight in the name of jesus you will pass this exam. There is one of you, you have this secret problem in your house. That's the family, your husband and your wife. Between the two of you, of course it's a secret. But you can't tell anybody that this thing is troubling you every time. Every time the matter comes up, it's hush, hush, hush. Try to put it away. Because you don't want trouble to erupt in the house. The Lord said, is putting an end to that trouble this night. In the name of Jesus. There's one of you as well, you're afraid. Your husband may get married to somebody else. It has troubled you so much, you don't even want to pray again. Your heart is divided. Your mind is divided. You can't even concentrate in simple quiet time. You read the Bible for five minutes and you are tired. You read the Bible for five minutes and then you are sleeping already. You read the Bible for five minutes and you don't even know what it means. The Lord said light is coming this night. Light is coming this night. Light is coming this night. The angel of revelation is coming to your house. In the name of Jesus, receive in the name of Jesus. Receive, 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 receive understanding. Receive wisdom. Receive understanding. Receive wisdom. Receive good judgment. Receive good judgment. As a husband, receive good judgment. As a wife, receive good judgment. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer mislead your children in the name of Jesus. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Thank you because you are a wonderful father. I pray that from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, let every sickness that is there disappear in the name of Jesus. Let those things that are swollen in your stomach dissolve in the name of Jesus. Let anything swall swollen outside of your body disappear now in the name of Jesus. Any pain in your throat, go now. Go now. The pain in your heart, go now. The pain in your chest, go now. Your spine that is painful, go now. In the name of Jesus, your eyes that are bringing out water, be healed in the name of Jesus. That regular headache at any particular time of the month, be gone now. 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 That pain on your left shoulder, at your joint of your left shoulder, in the name of Jesus, go now. Let that pain go now. Any racking pain throughout your body, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, go in the name of Jesus. 
and never come back again. Never come back again. Any genetic disease, I command them to be shifted and removed in the name of Jesus. Tonight you will have a dream. Tonight you will pass some things before tomorrow morning. From your body, they will pass to the toilet. They will pass to the toilet. They will pass to the toilet. Through your nose, they will pass out. Through your mouth, they will pass out. Through your body, they will pass out. You will no longer inherit them in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive, 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 receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. You receive supernatural knowledge, supernatural understanding. From now on, you will no longer be ma 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 ma. God will give you good tongue. We we'll give you good Yoruba. Give you good grammar. Give you good English. In the name of Jesus, God will give you utterance. God will give you utterance. You will not be ashamed in the public. You will not be ashamed outside. In the name of Jesus, God will build up your human spirit. God will breathe out your Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit of God in you will build you up. You will no longer go backwards. All the discouragement of the past, God will raise support for you. I say God will raise support for you. I say God will raise support for you. God will send supporters for you. God will raise support for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. I said, blessed be your name. I said, blessed be your name. I said, blessed be your name. If you couldn't touch your toe before, I want you to bow and touch your toe right now. Whatever else you couldn't do before, I want you to try it. Maybe your arms, maybe your legs, maybe your eyes. Whatever you couldn't do before. I want you to turn around if you couldn't turn around. If it was a waist pain, I want you to test it. I want you to know that God has healed you permanently tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Now turn to your right or turn to your left and grab hold of two, somebody's two hands and pray for them that what they receive this night will never be lost. Are, are you following me? Sorry, are you following me? Am I the only one talking? Are you following me? Are you saying, hey, hearing what I'm saying? I want to pray for them earnestly that as they go home, they will transfer the fire. I said they will transfer the fire. Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Pray for them. The blessing of God will follow them. The anointing of God will follow them. The gifts of the Spirit will follow them. Pray, pray for them, pray for them. Don't pray small, pray big. It's your brother, it's your sister. Pray big, pray big, pray big. 